Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Vicast. I'm Hongsen. And I'm Dallin. And today, we will be taking a look at setting up a new Android device. Following up on our previous episode of setting up a new iOS device out of the box, today, we are taking a look at Android instead. So, in front of me, I have a Sony Xperia 10 Mark IV. This is a very relatively new phone. It is a 2022 version. Yeah, so this is a mid-range device from Sony. It's pretty affordable in terms of modern phone prices. Yes, so apart from the phone box and the phone inside, they also provided a free case, which is quite cool. It's just a regular case. And on top of that, they also provided free wireless earphones. Okay, so anyways, let's open up the box and see what's inside. So before we open up the actual box itself, it's important to note that this box is a really slim box. As we mentioned in our Apple episode, nowadays most devices do not come with a charger anymore. So that's why we see like really small, thin, slim boxes that just barely fits the phone inside. So, mm. okay, it's quite a nice fitting box. Really solid, right? So maybe Dylan, you want to lift up the box and give us an idea of what is inside this box. Okay, so I'm going to lift up the box lid. I'm always having difficulties with this. <laughs> Okay, I just lift out the box lid, so I'm just going to put it one side. Yeah, so this is very similar to the Apple style boxes, a two-piece box. We mm. lift out the top portion of it, and then right on top of the box itself, we have our device. Okay, it's a very nice phone here. It's right on top of the box, or rather, once you open the box, you'll see the phone. Oh, what is this? This is a, I believe, an instruction manual. It's foldable. Let me see, let's open it up. Oh, okay, uh, it's just slightly longer than A4, I guess. Can go put this aside. There's nothing else. There is really nothing else in the box. Yeah, so this phone doesn't even come with a charging cable at all. Yes. How am I supposed to charge my phone then? Well, I mean, it's expected that you have a charging cable at home nowadays because Type C cables are so ubiquitous. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I guess I just have to pull out some of my old cables and use them. Right. So let's have a tour of the phone itself. Okay. Now, you want to do the honor? Sure. Now, one thing to take note is that Sony phones are usually rather slim, or rather, I should say they're rather narrow and tall because their screens tend to have a really tall aspect ratio to it. Okay. So now, let's start off with the bottom of the phone itself. Okay. Now the bottom edge of the phone, you will find nothing except for the type C port. Mm. So this is basically for you to plug in your charging cable or your type C accessories. Now moving clockwise, let's move up the left edge of the phone. It's a rather blank edge of the phone, except at the top of the left edge, we have a pull out tray for your SIM card and your micro SD card slot. So this is a really special feature of Sony phones. Okay. So firstly, it supports dual SIM. You can put in two SIM cards or you can put in one SIM card and what and SD card? Yeah, micro SD cards. Okay. Now let's move the top edge of the phone. The left of the top edge, we have something that's really unique in this day and age as well a 3.5 mm audio jack. This is something that's really rare. You, mm, know? Mm. you now, don't really see that in like a Samsung S22, for example. Yeah, not today iPhone. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Moving down the right edge of the phone, at the top one third of the phone itself, we have our volume rocker. And near the center of the right edge, we have an indented area, which is the power button of the phone that also doubles as a fingerprint reader. So this phone has a physical fingerprint reader. I really like a physical fingerprint reader compared to like touch sensor reader. Right, and yeah, I like it. It's very cool. Yeah, so, so lots of nostalgic features in this phone itself, actually. Yeah. Without further ado, let's power this on. Okay, I'm gonna power it on. As I'm powering on, I'm going to insert it to our mic so that you can actually hear the screen reader later to actually set up this phone. So when you press the power button for about 5 seconds, you'll feel a vibration. So once you feel a vibration, you know that the phone is actually powering up. And for those users who can see, there is a Sony written on the screen. And it will then flash to an Xperia kind of animation, which is very cool. Okay, give me a second. Let me just plug the cable in. Okay, so I have plugged in the cable. 
Uh, Alfonso, do you want to talk about how we can turn on talkback so that for somebody who has no sight, they can actually use their screen reader to walk them through the setup process? Yeah, sure. So basically for an Android phone, there's a shortcut to turn on the accessibility service. Okay. Talkback is a screen reader that's built into modern Android phones. What happens here is that when you press the power button and you feel the vibration and Dylan walked us through the startup process where he saw the logos on the screen itself. Now for someone with no sight, that might be a little bit challenging to know when exactly your phone has started up. What I would suggest here is after you feel the vibration, wait for say about one minute or one and a half minutes and then press the power button to wake the phone screen up. Now what this does is that you will ensure that the phone has fully booted up let the phone screen go to sleep and when you press the power button, the phone screen will wake up again. Now the shortcut to turn on talkback is to press and hold down the volume up and down buttons simultaneously to talkback comes on or when you hear a notification tone of the phone. Okay, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to press the power button and then I'm going to hold the volume up and down key simultaneously. Talkback on. Welcome to talkback. Okay, on the first note, when it's the first time you turn on your talkback, actually there will be an alert that will pop up before you actually hear talkback on. So we may not know about it. What you can do is after you feel the first vibration, you pause a while, you press the volume up and down key simultaneously again, and then it will say talkback on. So this really depends on the model and manufacturer of the Android device in question because the setup might be slightly different. Some phones will actually display a dialog box to tell you to press and hold the shortcut keys again and some phones may just turn on talkback directly. Your mileage may vary so just take note of this part. So in any case you should hear the notification tone as we heard just now. Okay so now I'm just going to walk through a little bit of the basic gestures like how we did for the Apple device setup. One finger flick to the right is to jump to the next item and one finger flick to the left to jump back to the previous item. To activate an item, you have to do a rapid double tap. So sound. the speed will sound something like that. Okay, so this is the speed you are aiming for. Okay, so these are some of the gestures they will be using. Occasionally, we may use the explore by touch method where we will just tap part of the screen. For example, the next button could be at the bottom. Close button. Bottom left of the phone. Next button. Yeah, so this is using the explore by touch method if you are very familiar with using talkback or any form of screen reader. And in any case, as you move your finger across the screen, whatever is under your finger will be read out to you. If there's something of interest to you that you wish to activate, double tap. Double tap anywhere on the screen to activate. Now what we have on screen right now is actually the Android tutorial or rather TalkBack tutorial where we'll be walked through how to use TalkBack. Okay, so the next button will advance us through the tutorial whereas the close button will bring us back to the setup process of this Android phone. In this case, we will not walk through the entire TalkBack tutorial. This is something that you could explore on your own if you are a new Android user. But the basic gestures as Dallin has covered is swipe left, swipe right, double tap and just the basic touching on the screen itself to feel what is underneath your finger and to hear it read out by TalkBack. Okay, so I'm going to close the tutorial. Close button. Close tutorial. You can come back to it at any time. Stay in tutorial. Close button. So this alert popped up to let me know that you can come back any time. So you can either stay if you accidentally press the close button by accident or if not, I'm just going to press close right now. Setup guide, welcome. Okay, so this is the first screen of the setup process. Let's just see what is there. So we just heard welcome just now. So I'm just going to do a one finger flick to the right. English, Singapore. Get started, button. So we hear English, Singapore. If let's say you would like to choose a different language, activate that and select a different language, like perhaps Chinese, if there's something that you're more comfortable with. But in this case, we are going to continue with English, Singapore. Okay, so I'm going to swipe to the right to get to the get started button. Get started button. Okay, so let's double tap on that. Setup guide. Important information. Not ticked. One, I am aware of the important information, warranty, safety, etc. Tick box. Okay, so I believe this is the important information that is being given by, uh, I guess, the manufacturer of the phone. In the sense, you can click into this before you take it to go and read it. 
Once you're done, just find the back button and you'll be brought back to this page again. So just some terms and conditions to agree to in terms of the use of the device itself, okay? So once you're here, you can just select I agree and just move on from this page. Okay, so let's take this tick box. I not ticked when I am a ticked. I am aware of the accept button. After that, you swipe to the right with one finger, you'll hear this accept button. So just double tap on that. Connect to Wi-Fi. Connect to Wi-Fi. Select a network in list. So this is the Wi-Fi screen. I believe to proceed with the setup, you have to connect to Wi-Fi. So let's do that now. On this page, you would actually see the list of Wi-Fi networks within this area. So let's pick our Wi-Fi network. Okay, I'm just going to use the one finger flick right gesture. Sure. Singtel A9XK, Wi-Fi 3 bars, secure network. Okay, so I'm going to select this. Singtel A9XK, password, edit box, out of list. Okay, before I type in the password, or should I say before you get into a break for me to type in the password, I'm just going to show you what's around this screen. So the focus is immediately brought to the password edit field. So if I swipe right, let's just see what other options there are. Not ticked, show password, tick box. Show password. Not ticked, drop down list advanced options. And more advanced options. So anyways. Cancel, button. Connect, button, disabled. And there are cancel and connect buttons. So basically after you type in the password, you just have to swipe right until you find the connect button. And just stop type on that. So we'll be back. Let's just type out password. Okay, so we are back. Now we have entered our password. So let's find the connect button. Not ticked, show password. Not ticked, drop down, cancel, button. Connect, button. Okay. So let's double tap on that. Keyboard hidden. Connect to Wi-Fi. Singtel A9XK, obtaining IP address, Wi-Fi 3 bars, secure network, in list. Box 6, one I am aware of the contents of the end user license agreement, tick box. Checking for additional language content free full stop. I am aware of the contents of the Box 6, two optional. Yes, I want to help improve Xperia by sharing app usage and diagnostics data, tick box. Okay, I'm just quite fascinated here. Why did it suddenly change voice? So now since we are connected to the network, it's actually able to download a new language pack. Now because of our region, Android will actually decide what is the best language pack that suits our region itself. So this is not determined by us, we can change the voice later. So yeah, let's find the option to move on from this screen. I believe I have to, let's see. Optional. Yes, I want to help improve it. This personal data will be by tapping accept. You agree to the. Okay, so I believe there are some mandatory checkbox that I will have to tick. So in this case, let me flick backwards again. This, I am aware of the box six one. I am I am aware of the contents of the box. Okay, let's just take this. I am aware of the contents box six two option. Optional. Okay. Yes. I this view is optional, so I will not take it. It's about sharing our usage data to help improve Sony products. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna click on the accept button. This by accept button. Okay. I'm able to click it now. Getting your phone ready. This may take a few minutes. Okay. So there's something new on the screen right now. So let's just see what's it. Copy apps and data heading. You can choose to transfer your apps, photos, contacts, Google accounts, and more. Don't copy button. Next button. Don't copy button. So for listeners who actually listened to our episode on setting up a new iOS device, this would sound a little bit familiar. This is where you can migrate your data over from an existing device. Now in this case, we would take the same approach as we did during that episode. We are going to set up this device as a new device without migrating our data from an existing device itself. So we're going to select don't copy. Yes, don't copy. Just a sec. Account setup. Check-in info. Heading. Google Play Services. Check-in info. Heading. Sign in with your Google account. Learn more. Sign in. Sign in with your Google account. Learn more. So notice the voice change. 
Now we are back to the original voice that we were using earlier. Okay, so this is the page that allows you to sign into your Google account. I am going to sign into my Google account, but before that, I'm going to show you all what's on the screen. Google, sign in. Now, just take note that the voice changed again. So this is the default voice that usually comes with Android devices in this particular region. With your Google account. Learn more about Google accounts. Edit box, email or phone. Okay, so here's the edit box where you put in your email or phone number, which later I will enter in. Forgot email. Then there's a forgot email button if you forgot your email address. Collapsed. Skip button. There's a skip button. Next button. And there's a next button. So I believe what I'm going to do is to sign into my Google account. So be right back. Okay, I've just typed in my email or rather my username for my Google account. So let's swipe until we find the next button. For skip. Next button. Web view. Keyboard hitting. Welcome. Showing password keyboard. Okay, let's just see what's on the screen. Welcome, Google. Welcome. Dalonai at gmail.com. Editing password. Edit box. Enter your password. Okay, so this is the edit field to enter the password for my email address. Box 6. Show password. Forgot password. Next button. Okay, so these are the other things that is in the screen. If I swipe, so I'm just going to swipe back to the edit box and I'll be right back. Editing password. Edit box. Enter your password. Okay, so I've just typed in the password. I'm going to swipe until I hear the next button. Show. Forgot. Next button. Okay. Web view. Welcome. Password keyboard hidden. Welcome. Google. Welcome. Daloni at gmail.com. We publish the Google Terms of Service so that you know what to expect as you use our services. By clicking, I agree, you agree to these terms. You are also agreeing to the Google Play Terms of Service to enable discovery and management of apps. And remember, the Google Privacy Policy describes how we publish the Google Terms Google Play to enable describes how Google handles information I agree. Don't add this account now. Go next default. Welcome. Web. Welcome. Web. Welcome. Web view. Google. So that you know what to ex. You are all. Google. To. And. Privacy. Describe. I agree. What's in? Double tap to activate. Okay, so what you have just heard is the terms and agreement for Google, right? So they have certain terms and agreement to have when you have a Google account. So if you want to add a Google account to the device, I guess there's just this agreement they have to agree to because you'll be using some of the services like say Google Play, right? So at this point, you just need to find the agree button. Just flick to the right all the way until you find it, okay? So let's just click on this agree button. Get in your account info. So you do its thing, it'll get your account information and it'll bring you to a new screen after that. Google services. Google services in list. Dalonao at gmail.com. Tap backup and storage. Collapse backup to Google Drive. Easily restore your data or switch devices at any time. Your backup includes apps, app data, call history, contacts, device settings. On switch for backup to Google Drive. Location. Collapse use location. Allow apps and services with location permission to. On switch collapse allow scanning. On switch for allow scanning. Device maintenance. Collapse send usage and diagnostic data. Help improve your Android device experience by automatically sending diagnostic device. On switch for send usage and diagnostic data. Collapse in tap accept to confirm your selection of these Google services settings disable. Accept button out of list. Double tap to act. Okay, so what have we just went through? We have went through a couple of options. There is options about backing up your Google Drive or backing up your phone apps 
and data to Google Drive. There is an option about location, so talking about location, and there is also an option about sending your user data to Google. I have just left all the default settings, so basically all of it is currently turned on. So I'm going to click on the accept button. Tap at accept button. There's just a lot of uh, showing numeric password keyboard. Set a pin. Editing pin edit box. Double tap on for added security. Set a pin to unlock the device. So on this page, this is where we can set up a pin as a form of security to protect our devices. So if let's say you wish to set up a four to six digit pin to protect your Android device. This is where you do it. Alternatively, you can choose to do it later. You don't have to do it at this stage. You can do it after you have set up your Android device. That's an option too. So in this case, we will not set a pin on this Android device. So I'll look for the skip button. For other editing, pin screen lock option, skip button. Right. So I'm going to click on the skip button. Keyboard hidden. Skip setup for pin and fingerprint. A pin is required to set up fingerprint unlock. Cancel. Skip button. Okay. Google. Access your assistant with the Google heading. If you agree, Google Assistant will wait in standby mode to detect Hey Google. Ask questions. So this is a page to set up Google Assistant. Basically, Google Assistant is a virtual assistant found on Android devices. You know, it's the same thing that you have on your Google Home devices, your Nest Audio, Nest Mini, so on and so forth. And for an Android phone, you can actually set your phone to constantly listen out for the Hey Google command. Hopefully, I didn't trigger any of your Google Assistant devices at home. So anyway, you can set up here for the voice match functionality. So yeah, this is what this page is for. What's the weather like? This? Get direction. Where's the nearest coffee shop? Get pin set up. You can update this choice in assistant settings. Get set an alarm for 5 a.m. to. You can update this choice in assistant settings. Skip button. I agree button. So in this case, we are also going to skip this option for now. This is something that you will be able to set up past the setup process if you so desire. Skip button. Google, access your assistant without unlocking your device heading. In this case, this is a function to set up Google Assistant to work without unlocking your device. So this is mm. when you are using something like perhaps a pair of earphones, maybe speakers, and you would like to trigger Google Assistant. Now with this enabled, you will be able to use Google Assistant without first unlocking your device. Remember in our previous screen, we did not actually set up our screen lock. In this case, this wouldn't really be an issue. So let's just swipe through it. Allow assistant on lock screen. Allow assistant to a similar voice or recording might be able to skip button. I agree button. I think there's no harm agreeing to this. So I'm just going to agree with it. Google Pay. Continue setup. Keep going to get your device fully set up. Leave now and get a reminder to finish later. Continue button. Leave and get reminder button. Continue setup heading. So at this point in time, I guess we are almost done with setting out the Android device itself with some of the additional Google services. Let's just go ahead and finish this up. Keep go continue button. Software updates. Software configuration. New suite, new application available. Support, new application updates available. Google Play Store, review additional apps heading. Apps will be downloaded over Wi-Fi. Support updated. All of the following apps. Tick all of the following apps tick box. From Sony. Sony, headphones connect. Tick Sony, headphones connect tick box. So what we are hearing now in this case is actually a list of apps and services that we can continue to install on our new Android device. So because this is a Sony device, again, we do have some of Sony's own applications. In addition to that, we will also have other Google applications that we can install as well. So let's just swipe through this list. If there are any of the options that you wish to install, 
just select it through the tick box so for a tick box you activate it just like any other thing you double tap on it now if you wish to not have it installed on your device double tap to untick it if it's ticked by default yeah so because just now we went past an option that says you know install the app so mine is naturally all stick la. so if i don't want any of it i guess i just have to double tap on it to untick it booking.com hotels and more Ticked. booking.com what six let's say i don't want this hotel thing then i can untick it amazon prime video six amazon prime video amazon shopping six amazon shopping New Suite by Sony. Tick. New Suite by Sony. Tick. PlayStation app. Tick. PlayStation. What six? From Google. Google Podcasts. Tick. Google. YouTube. Tick. YouTube. Google One. Tick. Google One. Google Duo. Tick. Google Wallet. Calculator. Google Slides. Google Sheets. Google Docs. Google News. Google TV, Google Drive, Google Home, OK button. OK, so we went through all the list of things that will be installed. So I've already unticked those that I don't want to install. After that, I have reached this OK button. So I'll just go double tap on it. System navigation, but selected radio button, gesture navigation to go home, swipe up from the bottom of the screen. To switch apps, swipe up from the bottom, hold, then release. To go back, swipe from either the left or right arch in list. Completing setup, installed 0 out of 17 applications. So what we are hearing here is actually to set up the navigation bar of Android itself. So for existing Android users, this is something that you will be quite familiar with. As of Android 9 or 10, I cannot quite remember. Don't quote me on this, of course, but... As of Android versions from a few years ago, there are a couple of ways to navigate throughout the Android's interface itself. So we have the very traditional classic method of navigation, which is a three button navigation method. So you have your back key, your home key, and your overview or recent apps key. So three buttons at the bottom of the screen where you can navigate through the Android's interface. So of course the home button brings you back to the home screen. The overview or recent app button brings you to the overview screen, which is basically like a task switcher where you can see all your recently opened apps. And the back button, of course, brings you back to the previous screen. Now, the new method is the gesture-based method. Having said that, the implementation of the gesture method could vary from device to device. We heard TalkBack read out the description of this particular phone. So in which case you swipe up from the bottom edge of the phone and release for home. Swipe up from the bottom edge of the phone and hold for the overview screen and swipe from the edge of the screen to go back. So a phone of a different Android version may have a slightly different implementation or even from a different Android manufacturer. So this is something that you want to take note of. So in this case, we will stick with the traditional three button method. So let's go down this list. Selected radio button, three button navigation, go back home and switch apps with buttons at the bottom of your screen. Okay, so this is already selected. Next button out of list. So let's just proceed with this selection. Getting your phone ready. This may take a few minutes. Setup guide. You're ready to go. Your Xperia smartphone is now ready to use. Finish button. As you have heard, we have come to the end of the setup screen. There's this finish button, so I'm going to just tap on it. Device unlocked. Home screen. Xperia Home. So now we are brought to the Android home screen. We have finished the setup process and our device is ready for use. Okay, so Xperia Home is the custom home screen of Sony. So, we have reached the end of our setup process. In a future episode, we will of course walk you through the Android's interface. And in that case, we will actually be talking about this particular phone. We'll be looking at Android's interface itself. Also, some of the other accessibility services. In general, we'll just be configuring the device to be more suitable for our use cases. Well, thanks so much for all of you who have tuned in till now. If you like this episode, feel free to drop a like. And if you do not want to miss out on our future content, 
or content that is posted out by GDS, feel free to press the subscribe button. If you have any queries or questions, please drop it down in the comment section or if you are a GDS client, feel free to contact us directly. If you are not a GDS client, just feel free to reach out through the GDS channels of communication. Your questions will be directed to us. We will be happy to assist you. Once again, a big thank you to all of you guys. Have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye, and I'll see you in our future episode.